everybody! So we are here today, Shanley, Sally, Crystal, Corey, uh, <laughs> to film our Spookathon TBR. This is our third year participating in Spookathon, I think. I think. So, yeah. Um, officially as Allocate, and it's one of our favorite readathons of the year. It is so much fun. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, it's hosted by Books and Lala, who is fantastic, um, and it's from the 14th to the 20th of October this year. So we have gone through all of her challenges. Huh? It's low-key, we can kind of play with it, do what you want, but we're gonna go through and share our TBRs with you guys. Yes. Sound good? All right, so the first prompt, of course, always is to read a thriller. Starting down with Crystal. So my pick for a thriller is actually called The October Man, and it is a novella follow-up to Ben Aronovich's mm. Lie Sleeping, which this is the second, not second, seventh, Ah. <laughs> the seventh book in his Rivers of London series, and The October Man is 7.5. Gotcha. So I'm almost done this one, so I'm really looking forward to seeing what lies in store with the next novella. I've only read one of the other novellas in this series, and it was actually really good, and it completely caught me by surprise, and The October Man is actually set in Germany, not London, so I'm actually quite excited to see what happens there, nice. but it's a urban fantasy series, so there's like, it's a police procedural, but there's magic and bad monsters <laughs> and chimeras and a super big Ooh. bad who's been running through the whole series called The Faceless Man. Oh, so I'm interested to see. Um, the October Man is kind of like a police procedural, and from what I understand, this German detective finds this dead, messed up body at the bottom hill of a vineyard, and I think the vineyard has some kind of play in it, and I'm very excited. Nice. Cool. Sounds cool. fantastic. Yeah. All right, Sally, your first one. Thriller. Thriller. Okay, well, here's what always happens to me with Spookathon. I always forget that there's prompts, and I'm just like, oh, I get to read a bunch of spooky books. <laughs> I forget to plan ahead, uh, and I also am like, I'm going to read a stack of books this thick, and then I get through none of them. So, I get through some of them. I get them. through some of them. <laughs> So there is a thriller that I have actually already started at home, but it's very thick, and that's The Whisper Network by Chandler Baker, mm -hmm. and that is an adult thriller um, that uh, I'm loving so far. It's like point of view of four different women who all right. work for the same company, um, and the, uh, the CEO of the company dies in the first chapter, um, and the, uh, the man that is kind of like set to take his place is somebody that all of these four women plus like basically all of the other women in the office have had some sort of encounter right. with at some point. Mm -hmm. um, there's also this like spreadsheet going around the office of like uh, sort of men not to be right. in their office alone. It's this like whisper network of like right. the bad men in the office. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so these I still don't, I don't know what happens, like nothing has happened yet, but like there is an inciting incident and basically right. these four women are like, we can't let this man become the next CEO, sort of by any means necessary. Ooh. And it's great so far. That sounds uh, fantastic. Yeah, I'm really, really liking it. Um, but it's, there's no, I, I don't think there's any chance I'm going to finish right. it within the Spookathon. So I think I will, I will be combining a challenge with another book that I will talk about a little Sounds bit good. more later. Cool. Yeah. Um, I also, I did plan my TBR with the prompts, but I forgot which books I put to which prompts. So let's just right. take a look at, I think, <laughs> I think this could just be considered a thriller. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is like based on true events. This is A Brief History of Seven Killings by Marlon James. This won the Man Booker in 2015. Um, I saw a copy and I knew I had to pick it up and I knew essentially nothing about it. Um, and it is about the attempted assassination of Bob Marley, which apparently is a thing that happened and I didn't <laughs> know about it. <laughs> um, but it's like the little burb is seven gunmen storm Bob Marley's house, machine guns blazing. The reggae superstar survives, but the gunmen are never caught. What? <laughs> oh, so, I like it. this sounds thrilling to me. Um, I think it's like a novelization of that story. Right. Um, and I'm, Intrigued to, to learn and see how it ends up. Yeah, um, sounds it's fascinating. I was talking to Ave about it before we filmed this video, and she said it's one of her all-time favorite books. Nice. So Dang. I'm excited to pick it up. Is it a thriller? We're saying it sure. is. <laughs> like Lala said, like she's not gonna police any of these, neither. Are we. It's we gonna just be thrilling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
a, like a non-fictional thriller. That's exciting. Yeah. That's and cool. I was watching her video last night and just to be like, I'm going to make things fit. I looked up the definition of a thriller and it just needs conflict, tension, suspense, and unexpected twists. That well, sounds so. right. I think we're good. <laughs> okay. okay. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, Sharon Lee, what do you got? All right. So I'm reading In the Hall with the Knife by Diana mm. Peterfront, which is like a book a based on mystery. mystery. <laughs> AU version of Clue, That's amazing. where like all the characters, so like there's like Beth Peacock, Peacatch, I don't know if that's how you pronounce her last name, but like Green, um, sorry, Vaughn Green, Sam Mustard Maester, and uh, they have to solve the mystery because they're, they're, from what I can tell, they're trapped at, like they're, they're at a, um, a boarding school, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and they get snowed in, <laughs> setting. and their headmaster, headmaster body, is murdered. And they need to figure out who did that. <laughs> and it sounds so much fun. And I'm so excited I've for never it. Heard of this and that's amazing. Is it out yet? Is it, or is it yeah, it just came. This is this is an arc, but it just came out. I think like a few days Perfect. ago. So Go I'm already in this one. That's, I, I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the second prompt is to read a book with red on the cover. Crystal. Um, for me, this comes another book that I have a was a big oh, fan no. of, and that is Gravity Falls, Lost Legends, a graphic novel by Alex Hirsch. Cute. Um, I'm a big fan of the TV show, and Ave came in the other day, and she's like, oh my god, have you read this? And you need to. So yeah, Mabel's got a little bit of red going on. Yeah. Shmebulok's got a little <laughs> red going on. The He's man is my hero. He's a garden no, gnome. Sorry. And <laughs> Yeah, I'm just really excited. I love this world a lot, and I figured a graphic novel would be a nice. Nice. Plus, and it's spooky. Have you seen Gravity Falls? I mean, there's cool. going to be some weird stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Awesome. Okay. I am going to read do, 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 do. The Beast, a dark, deep novel by Ali Condi and Brendan Reichs. This is the second book in the Dark Deep series. I read the first one last year and it was very creepy. Mm -hmm. um, it's like Stranger Things meets Goonies is sort of like the, the way it's pitched. Um, these four kids uh, in the first book, I have no idea what's going to happen in the next one, but in the town that they live in, there's still Cove and it's like always foggy no matter what the weather is and there is an island in the middle and they uh they go there in the first one and it turns out that there's they're not the first ones who've been there and there's ah. like a lodge and then there's like a very interesting thing in the middle of the lodge and they they uh start to spend like all their time there and then it does not stay on the island. <laughs> things, ensue. <laughs> things ensue. So that's that's where this one picks up, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. It sounds very Lovecraftian. I I'm very underschooled in Lovecraft, so okay. that's I wouldn't have drawn that. But parallel, it's it's but... sort of like like a lot of like like evocative feelings of like terror and horror. yeah. It seems very but much for like kids. That. But for kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, for kids. <laughs> totally. Never a better uh, selling point. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I didn't even realize that there's like a very spooky skeleton rising out of these flames. Mm. That's uh Ooh. that's very scary. Oh wow. That is scary. Cool. <laughs> you see. I also again, not planning ahead, just finished like the perfect book for this prompt before like like last week. So if anybody's looking for a book hey. for the red on the cover um magic for liars by sarah gailey is so much fun uh i don't know if it's ya or adult but basically it's like it's a, adult. yeah it's it takes place in a high school though in like okay. a boarding school but the main character is like in her 30s right um but it's like a hard-boiled detective novel with magic I set know. in like an exclusive um boarding school and there's been a murder it's like it takes so many boxes for like all yeah. of us i really enjoyed it i couldn't so many it down. boarding school murders I love know. boarding school murders. <laughs> that's apparently a thing it is you sent me a really great list you there, like 50 <laughs> there was 50 books. ones so if you need a list we got oh a lot God. of them it's so, dangerous to live in a boarding school <laughs> Um, so yeah, that one came highly recommended to me from a few of like my go-to sources for what to read next, and now I'm passing it along to you. It was a lot of fun and definitely has read on the cover. Um, cool. Definitely need to read that. Yeah. Um, all right. Now, which one did I pick from the red one? <laughs> what do I have here? Um, whoop, we're gonna go with 
Tokyo Ghoul <laughs> by, by, by you this itty bitty itty bitty is this red? It pops though. It pops. It does. Is, it is, is one eye yeah. is red, mm -hmm. which is creepy. <laughs> so I see Ishida. Um this is I don't didn't know much about it, but I just read the back before this, and it's about a boy who is excited to go on this date with this beautiful girl, and it turns out the girl doesn't want him for anything, but he wants he wants to eat his body, yeah. and I think that turns him into a half a half human half ghoul hybrid. What? Then he must survive the ghoul uh, turf wars. Oh my god. And master his new powers. <laughs> um, I love it. Apparently it's quite creepy. Um, I'm very excited to get into it. Ooh. But uh, yeah, so it's, a so it's a manga, so it's going to be a quick read, but sounds spooky. <laughs> Ooh, I may have to borrow that one when you have it. Creepy. I want to read that too, so I'm going to be jumping on Sure, the sounds good. I'll read it early in the week. <laughs> People always comment in these videos how like, oh, I watch these and my TBR just grows and grows. Try so being us. us. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what do you have? Uh, Alright, so my pick for mm -hmm. Red on the Cover is Tinder by Sally Gardner. Oh I'm so I've been meaning to read this one forever and it's been just sitting on my shelves. And so this is the opportunity. This is it right yeah. here. And oh, I don't so know good. too too much about it just yet, and I kinda wanna keep it that way. Yeah. All I know is I think it's like a whole a slightly horror retelling of the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale, The Tinderbox. Okay. And that's all I know. Oh, that and there cover. are the creepiest, awesomest illustrations Ooh. throughout. Ooh. I love Sally Gardner. <laughs> I, oh god, I love her stuff so much. Yeah. I, I love the red necklace, which I read years ago. And I'm really excited to read another one by her, so I'm doing it. That's it's happening. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Doing it. And also, yeah, red pops. Look at that. It looks great. <laughs> All right, so next up we have read a book with a spooky word in the title. Okay. So this was a last minute change up for me because Corey and I just shot a different video where she recommended this book. And I'm going to read it because <laughs> it sounds amazing. And that's called The Monster of El... Ellendhaven? Ellendhaven. <laughs> Oh, um, I love that. It's a little novella, which will be great, and seems very spooky about what Corey was talking about. So he's a, a monster who can't die. Mm -hmm. He could chop him up, stab him, throw him down a flight of stairs, and he's just going to keep ticking. Oh, buddy. And then <laughs> yeah. He embraces it. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then he meets a man who could twist minds. So Ooh. let's see what this partnership brings around. Yes. It's like a, I can, the video we just filmed is going up after this one, so I'll get into it a bit more, but it's basically the monster, but he's like a human, he is human shaped, okay. gets obsessed with this man who can do magic, and they like, so they like make a scheme to like take down some people, and like they are not good people, mm -hmm. they're bad people, it is a gross book, like it's, <laughs> it's, ugh, but it, it was sounds like my jam, so honestly. good, and like, it's also like, they are both like obsessed with each other, oh. but there's, and there's this amazing tension between them hmm. that I'm not gonna spoil it, but oh, it's just like such this like it's like a sexual tension and it's incredible. <laughs> Interesting. So, well, anyway, so yeah. it's great. Uh, keep I me on the edge too. of my seat, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> and it's a novella, which is great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and the word is creepy as monster. Mm. Okay, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, what am I doing for this one? What am I doing? <laughs> All written down here. Oh, yes. Okay. I have two again. <laughs> we'll see which one I get to. I'm just hedging my bets on all of these. <laughs> the first one is The Screaming Staircase by Jonathan Stroud. This is the first in the Lockwood & Co. Uh, series. Um, I don't know a ton about them other than mm. they are supposed to be fantastic. <laughs> it's like a um, middle grade monster yeah. uh detective agency um that sounds fun yeah i think this was, was, was this on your yeah, yeah, it was oh. it was. <laughs> <laughs> i haven't gotten to it yet so. i'm pretty sure it was <laughs> probably <laughs> maybe this is just like the tradition yeah, yeah. so like next year this time as well. a perennial favorite yeah. <laughs> that uh, maybe one day i'll read <laughs> <laughs> the other one I'm planning on reading, it just hasn't arrived at the library yet, uh, is Beautiful Darkness, which is a graphic novel by Fabian Vaumann. Oh, I've read that one. It's so creepy. Yes. Uh, I think it came out in like 2012. It came out while I was working at uh, the bookstore and it's beautiful. Mm. Uh, it's from Drawn and Quarterly, who puts out like the best like art book piece mm -hmm. uh, graphic novels. But um, 
yeah, it's this like stunning cover and it's all like botanical and there's, it's like the main character is a little like princess, but it's basically like an anti-fairy tale. And when you look closer at the cover, there's like a dead hand lying in <laughs> yeah. the grass. Um, yeah, I remember reading like part of it while I was still working at the bookstore and like there was a couple of pages that like haunted my dreams. Like it's really quite gory in yeah, some places. Seems about right. <laughs> um, so I will for sure be reading that one. I just, it's just going to be at the library in like two days. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, mine, what was kind of spooky setting? Uh, spooky, spooky, word. Spooky, spooky word. Spooky word. Sorry. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm again. We've got a couple monsters going on here. <laughs> but this is a uh, Monsters Volume 3. Um, uh, this is just one of my fav new favorite graphic novels. It is so beautiful about this human half, like she's a monstrous. She kind of has monstrous abilities to her. It's such an eerie and beautiful world. It's hard to explain. Um, I don't want to explain. You know what? If you haven't ever watched it, it is a beautiful, creepy adult uh, graphic novel that's like quite gory and scary, but also just like just stunning. And I can't recommend it enough. Me, it's very emotional. And I've been sitting on volume three for like four months. So <laughs> when now is the time. Like Monstrous. It's a spooky word. <laughs> done and done. All right. In and out. In and out. Okay. All right. My pick is a, I think it's a middle grade graphic novel called Grimoire no Noir. So Ooh. right there, Grim Gr I got two, Grimoire I got two. I can't even say it It's hard properly. to say. Grimoire Noir. Grimoire Noir. <laughs> two spooky words. Yeah, there so you go. Bonus points there. And this is by Vera Greentee and Jana Bogic. Okay. Um, and this is a, I think this takes place in a town where all the girls are witches. Oh, nice. Yeah, I love it. And <laughs> this boy has to either find his sister or save his sister. One of the two. Again, I don't know too much about it because I just want to kind of dive in, but that's nice. my pick. Cool. Neat. I love middle grade noir. 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 It is Say hard. Say that five times. <laughs> it is difficult. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up is to read a book with a spooky setting. Um, for me, that is The Haunting of Hill House <laughs> by Shirley Jackson. Um, is, that, is that a spooky setting? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know much about it other than that uh, it's a very famous book. It's been a movie. It's recently been a television series. I've never read it. And it was in an owl crate box. So yeah. I should read it. There's a haunted house. It's yeah. a spooky setting. Totally. Yeah. Is it haunted? haunted? House. Do we know? The we spookiest will soon of settings. Find yes. <laughs> out. All right, so mine is Wilder Girls by Rory Power. This is the one that I'm also considering a thriller. I mm -hmm. think it's a thriller as well. I don't actually know. Um, but I have heard only good things about it. Um, it is YA, which mm -hmm. is, oh, I could also use this for my next one, Out of My Wheelhouse. There you go. <laughs> I don't have to read a lot of YA, but uh, it is like speculative sci-fi body horror, and yep. it is set in uh, a quarantined girl, all-girls school, which is so spooky. <laughs> is it another boarding school? Yes. Mm. Oh, God. <laughs> We should have just like a boarding school read a thought. <laughs> there has to be, oh, really. We should make one. Um, but yeah, basically, there's this uh, a thing called uh, the talks that's like a. It sort of presents itself differently in everybody, mm -hmm. it seems like, but it like is, yeah, like a, a virus that changes your body in horrific ways. Cool. And cool. it uh, sounds really cool. Sounds and really scary. And that cover, though. It's such a beautiful cover. cover though, it's one of yeah. the most beautiful covers I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I'm really looking forward to it. All right, so mine is I can't pick two. I think this one will fit my last one better though. Okay. Um, this is another book that I don't know anything about, and I want to keep it that way. But that is After Dark by Haruki Murakami. Um, I love Haruki Murakami. I've read at least a dozen of his books, um, and I found this one at a garage sale. And I was like, I'm ready. I don't know what it's about. And the back it literally gives you no description of the book, <laughs> except that it's set between in, 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 encounters in Tokyo between the hours of midnight and dawn. Whoa. So okay. I can only imagine that, for me, that's a bit spooky. spooky. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tokyo is a crazy place if you've never been. It's a it's wonderful, but at night it's whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very safe, don't get me wrong, but it is like... Yes. 
there's something creepy about it. Eerie? Right? Yeah, yeah. Something very eerie. Um, so I'm excited to read this. Murakami is, has very, like, magical, strange, not always easy to sink your teeth into, but it's always worth it at the <laughs> end kind of writing, and I'm here for it. And eventually I want to read all of his books, so... After dark. One more on the list. One more on the list. Yeah. Fantastic. Alright, so um, this is the point where I start cheating. Because That's not she, cheating. I, <laughs> because I know I'm not going to be able to have time to read five different books. Sure. So both of these count? <laughs> totally. Right? Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Totally. totally. I mean, this one again, Town Full of Witches. Heck Spooky. yeah. Also, upset I was not born there. Yeah. But like, <laughs> alright. Uh, and then I'm just I'm just guessing this takes place all in the same town, so I think it this looks spooky. It yeah. looks spooky. I'll let you guys know, but <laughs> at least one of these has to fit the bill. So sounds good. Um, okay, so the last prompt is to read something that you wouldn't normally read. So for me, that is the haunting of Hill House. Now I'm not against reading a horror story, hey. <laughs> and I like I have often picked up scary and creepy books and mm -hmm. as a kid I really liked mysterious creepy ghosty things and stuff like that but lately it's not something I will generally reach for and when I knew we were including this in a box I said to a friend of mine who he is the horror man mm -hmm. like he is obsessed with written horror film horror just he's the horror guy and I was like oh I'm getting this really beautiful edition of the haunting of hill house I'm like would you like it for like your collection like I'm just gonna give it to you he's like you're not going to read it? And I was like, you probably won't get around to it. He's like, you need to read this book. <laughs> so for him, going outside my wheelhouse, for things that I'm going to read immediately, I'm going to read this classic horror by Shirley And Jackson. this edition has an introduction by Guillermo del Toro. Which is Ooh. why I wanted to give it to him, mm. because mm. I knew he would kind of appreciate it. But I also feel that he already has it, because he's obsessed with horror. But to do him proud, I'm going to read this book. Um, also, the introduction is very long, so I didn't read the introduction, so the book is actually only oh. like 200 and something pages, it's not like... Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, the introduction's so pretty solid. The introduction's very long. No suggestions for further reading. <laughs> um, I'm also choosing this for my wouldn't normally read. I, I really don't tend to read a lot of classics, I also don't tend to read a lot of like pure horror. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is something that uh, probably would have taken me a while to get around to, but uh, it sounds great. I and pretend. I want to read it before I watch the you show. You can compare notes. There you go. So that is mine. You guys can body read it. Yeah. <laughs> um, mine is uh, a book you've probably all heard of. <laughs> <laughs> And that is Fractured, Tales of the Canadian Post-Apocalypse. So I don't tend to read a lot of Canadiana, but um, I've actually had this on my TBR for like, on my Goodreads TBR for like years, and I don't know why or where I found it. Um, but yeah, it is short stories set during the post-apocalypse in, in Canada, Canada. <laughs> like and how we might survive there. It's like Vancouver, the Prairies, Yellowknife, Manitoba, yeah. It's it's either going to be real good or real bad, <laughs> and it could go either way. I think it sounds promising. Um, there's 20, it has a lot of potential. There's 23 yeah. stories in here, so if I read two a day, cool. Hey, that's not. That's I a could good way get to do I it. could get through it this week, but yeah. it is like not something you would necessarily be like. Ah, oh, yes, I should read this book immediately. <laughs> um, but you know what? I need to read more Canadiana. Yeah. I'm not very good at reading Canadian authors, so. We have so many good authors. So many good authors. Um, I actually haven't looked up, I don't even know who's in here. If it's anybody I've even heard of. Nope, not so far. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. This is the second printing. Yeah, there wow. you go. So, right. Must have been good. Right. If it <laughs> or a bunch sold of out lost. of the first printing, then. <laughs> so that's my one that is de destined to be a classic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, Shannon, what's All right. yours? And I'm double dipping again, cool. and it's in the hall with the knife. <laughs> Look at that. I don't read a lot of thrillers. I don't mm. read a lot of mysteries. So yeah, this works for two things. <laughs> perfect. This is the perfect opportunity to. Nice. All right. Perfect. Wicked. That is Spookathon. Um, oh. We are so excited. I'm going to read all of these books. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Um, I'm excited too. I'm gonna get an audiobook for the really long one, I think. Nice. 
<laughs> so that seems like a good call. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm very excited. It's always a really, it's a week of fun of just reading and sharing spooky books with each other. So yeah. I hope you guys are participating. If you are participating, let us know down below. Yeah, we want to um, know what's on your list. What's on your list. If you've filmed a TVI video, send it our way. We'll have a peek. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. <laughs> Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye.